why she's loved anywhere she goes in the world. Um, one of the founders of Bueno Capital, of Crypto HQ, a uh, human rights lawyer who's worked with uh, companies ranging from CA uh, Commercial to uh, Amnesty International. And so, um, question was again? Why do we think blockchain is going to have such a big impact on emerging markets? Well, I'll start off. Um, in the first Siglo app, which is our blockchain protocol for digital and financial inclusion, is called Piggy, which we founded uh, about, uh, we launched a year and a half ago. Um, most of our users, 65% of them, don't have a bank account. And we're working with the banks in Latin America, and many of our users, the banks aren't even interested in them. However, we believe that our users are incredibly valuable. They're participating in the online world because we give them free access to the internet, and they want to participate in digital economies. Um, and we believe that blockchain allows a way that they can connect to the digital economy without having to go into a brick and mortar bank, which I don't know if you've ever done that in an emerging market, but it's a horrible experience. How do we identify emerging markets? What are these countries, and who are we? How do we describe them? Uh, good question. I, mean, I think emerging markets are high growth markets where uh, smartphone penetration is going like this. And people that a couple years ago, they probably never had a computer in their house, but chances are they have a smartphone in their pocket. But there's one problem, and that is that access is expensive. So what happens? It's prepaid wireless. 83% of Mexico, for example, is prepaid wireless. 73% of the world is prepaid wireless. What does that mean? That means every couple days, these people are going to the little corner store, and they're topping up another dollar, another two dollars, have a little bit more connectivity. But what that really means is super inconsistent connectivity. So they turn their data off, they have a smartphone, they make some calls, but they're not really like participating in the in the mobile economy like I'm sure all of us do. That, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so what do you think are the major hurdles that are keeping consumers in Latin America from being able to participate in the digital economy today? I would say number one, the cost. And the whole point um, of this token economic structure is that we are we are allowing people to monetize or to create value out of something that they already own, their personal data. Mm -hmm. So when you use the Piggy app, um, the, the first app on the Sigla protocol, you are allowing yourself to share whatever pieces of personal information that you care to share with big brands, who in turn are paying you for it. So it's not just, obviously, your personal data that you sign up with, but it's also micro tasks, your ability to watch videos, interact with targeted content like articles. And that's something that everybody can do, and that's inherent human value, the value of your own personal data, and the fact that you should be profiting from it, as opposed to most apps right now who are not honest with people. You sign in, and you download an app, and you have to give all these different permissions in order to use it. Most people don't think about that, but that actually gives permission for those apps to monetize your data. But it's your data, and when there are certain people around the world that don't have anything else to monetize, they should have the rights in order to earn tokens for that. And that's what Piggy has allowed them to do. It allows them for the first time to participate in an economy that they wouldn't have been able to apply. Actually, the, the, the New York Times did a piece a few weeks ago, or maybe it's months ago, I think the crypto time was really good. But the point is that they said that the average person in the US, your data is worth $1,000 per year. Um, I don't know exactly the source of that. Obviously, in the emerging markets, it's a bit less. But that's a lot of value that who's getting right now? Google, Facebook, okay, nothing against them, but they're, they're in emerging markets, even if it was a fraction of that, how much, how far does that go? That can get somebody connected, for starters, and get them participating in the mobile economy, get them starting to do financial uh, transactions online. So that's, so that's what Siglo is all about. So data and, and privacy and ownership has been a big discussion between both in, in Europe and, and in the US with significant differences, right? So I guess, how valuable is this data and why do you think consumers in the emerging markets can benefit more from it than consumers in countries like America or China? Well, I think that if we can convert that into to connecting those users, and so that value, we pass it right back to giving our users more connectivity. Um, and so that's a really powerful combination because brands around the world, they wanna connect with their stakeholders. 
And Piggy, the first single app, it connects with consumers that are mostly young, 18 to 24 year olds. But some of the apps that were already onboarding onto the single protocol want to give connectivity to other stakeholders. So we're talking with an online mortgage broker. Um, it's not an online mortgage, it's a nationally owned mortgage broker with five million accounts. They want to sponsor connectivity of their account holders. We're talking with a low cost airline who wants to sponsor connectivity for their frequent flyers so that people don't call a call center, which is expensive, and they book on their phone. They can't book on their phone unless they're connected to the internet. So we're also speaking with one of the largest beer companies of the world, one of the largest soft drink bottlers of the world, who want to sponsor connectivity for their employees, 100,000 in one case, and for their sales force, which in one case is 300,000 people. So it's not just about consumers, it's about all kinds of stakeholders that can benefit from the mobile economy. And so the brands benefit, but also the users. Mm -hmm. And I guess, what are the highest priority needs that you guys need to address for people in emerging markets, from the people who are underbanked to the people who have no access to data or no ability to, to get any of that? Well, I would say one of the most exciting things that these guys found in the data when they were looking at how Piggy users were interacting was that users that were outside of Mexico and Colombia, which are the 1.2 million users in the ecosystem at the moment, were downloading Mexican and Colombian VPNs in order to download Piggy and to earn tokens so that they could pay for the phone bills of their families. So without us promoting it, even though that's something that we wanted to do in the future anyway, people were using this for remittances. Um, the remittances market is not only completely exploitative of people that don't have the money to waste, um, but it's something that needs to be completely overhauled. And the fact that we saw that in the data before we actually had built out the rollout of the remittances program is incredibly exciting. And it's something that the Siglo protocol looks to do everywhere around the world, which is instead of taking 20% you know, of people's money that don't have the money, that are sending back money to their families that have nothing, we are able to give them a quick, cheap, easy, and transparent way to get money back to their families no matter where they are. So, um, this is really important because I'm an advisor to a company, and this is a company I deeply believe in. We have seven billion people in the world, and many of those are unbanked, they don't have bandwidth, they don't have capabilities to have some of the most basic things that we take for granted. This company is about inclusion. It's about creating a culture of inclusion around the world. And that's who we're looking for in our investors and our partners. Those that want to take those that are less fortunate and help build them up, help them bank, help them be educated, help them have a voice, help them monetize their value. And that's what this company is all about. And that's why I became involved with them. And I urge all of you, if you get involved with this company, it's not a company, it's a movement. It's very important that we create a space for people around the world to be included into the benefits of a digital society, and that's what blockchain is all about. It's about the inclusion, it's about the we. It's not about the me or the I, it's about us. And so, Isaac and Joel, as founders, I've gotten to know these guys recently, and I gotta tell you, they're beautiful human beings. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to be part of this company and help them in any way I can, because it's not about us in this room, it's about the people that don't have what we have and help us helping them come up into a better life. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. And before we open it up for a few questions, I just also like to thank uh, our host, uh, David, who's been so kind to open up his beautiful apartment um, and to let us have you guys. Thank you, David. So, thank you. in Colombia with their boots on the ground, working with uh, unbanked users, working with mom and pop shops, uh, and, and get them to accept digital currencies, um, we decided we wanted to go out and meet the world. And so over this last six weeks, we've been in Miami and Davos. Uh, Miami, we met Nathan. Uh, in Davos, we met so many people. Uh, we met um, people in Davos. We met Eric in Davos. <laughs> Jalak, where is Where's Jalak? We met you and Zoog as well. David Noble, so many people. Dave, we met you in Miami, um, San Francisco. And so I just would like to thank you all for all of your support, for coming to learn about Siglo. And what, if there's any questions, I think we have time for four questions, three questions.
Anybody have questions? Don't be shy. No questions? I didn't think we explained it that well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got a question. We got a question right here. Yeah, so um, what do you guys need help with and what will you need help with? What what can people in this room what can people in this room help with besides like um, well, we're, 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 well, no, you, ahead, we're a founder. I was just going to say that we're looking for um, new country partners so that we can build out more dApps on the Siglo protocol once it's released up to the ICO. That's incredibly important to us, people that have use cases um, really absolutely anywhere so that we can start to build out those concepts uh, for launching of the protocol for sure. Yeah, and I was just going to say, I mean, it sounds cliche, but it's true. It's all about, somebody told me a few months ago, you know, if this is what you guys are trying to do, you're trying to build a blockchain protocol, the most important thing you can do is build a community around it. Because it's not just about, hey, let's do an ICO, and you know, you know, that's not what this is about. This is about actually building something that has a huge impact on a whole lot of places that need the most help. And the only way that we're going to do that is with the community around us. So, you know, whether that's, you know, whether you build apps and end up building apps on this system too that do the same kind of thing that Piggy does, or whether you invest, or whether you, you know, do something else, have a new blockchain that's going to help us solve some of the problems that we have. Those are the people that we want to meet, and maybe it's today, maybe it's a year from now, maybe it's five years from now, but the community that we build around this is the most important thing. And I thank all of you now, having been here, you're officially part of this community. And yeah, so I mean, I think that's, tell us what you do. Tell us what, we'll tell you more about what we do. Let's see how we can work together today. And if not today, maybe one day. And if not, then hey, it's a great meeting. <laughs> Pre-sale, sale, launch, timeline, how much money, hard, soft cap, hard cap, where we at? <laughs> so we're doing a token generation uh, event at uh, the end of March. <laughs> Private pre-sales to accredited investors, both American and non-open, uh, actually tomorrow. So if you're interested in your accredited investor, talk to one of the team. Um, you might see Siglo uh, on them somewhere. And uh, we'll, I mean, if you're interested in the private pre-sale, come talk to us and we can discuss discounts. But uh, it's uniform, the first money in gets the highest discount. Uh, we want to be transparent about that. Um, I think it's important uh, before we close this chat to talk about um, one other really serious, important application of what we've been using Piggy for. Uh, over the past, I guess, 10 years, some of our um, best friends and business partners have been generating an ecosystem to build um, connectivity to rural areas in places like Mexico, and specifically Mexico, but other places in Latin America. So because we are able to roll out kind of like satellite Wi-Fi hotspots in places where the government can't afford to provide connectivity, we've been using Piggy in these areas where people can then have sponsored free connectivity. Via these, satellite. Via satellite. Um, in most of these areas, um, they are quite trouble-ridden. Um, in all of my war crimes classes, they usually start out with the number one question, which is, what is the deadliest war in the world? And my people come out with loads of things, but they don't usually say the drug war in Mexico, which is the deadliest war that has ever existed and it's still ongoing on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> the reason why it's so deadly is because it's so easily easy to recruit um, the smartest kids and all of the kids from all of these rural areas. Um, right now we're using Piggy to sponsor connectivity in these rural areas where we're training kids, uh, we're training kids on Code Academy um, so that they can start to learn and develop their skills to have very significantly well-paying jobs in areas where you know, you're, you're really working at the local restaurant or for your mom and pop where there's, there's not much else that there is there for you to do. So $50 a week to work for the cartels is pretty attractive. So if you can earn a couple hundred dollars an hour, um, guess who you're never going to work for? That's the drug cartels. Uh, they're going to work for us instead, <laughs> building social impact projects on the blockchain all around the world from their home where they don't have to leave their families and they can provide for their families. So this is a defense project, a social and humanitarian project, as much as it is anything else, and specifically in Mexico. We have wonderful people like Luke Pellegrini, who's here somewhere, who has helped us translate the Berkeley blockchain programs into Spanish which we're implementing into all of the top technical universities into Mexico in September. And from now until then, we are having all of these kids 
in the rural areas in these universities training on code academies so that they're ready to train as Solidity developers in September. It's very exciting. We're building our own coding army in Latin America, and we'd like to roll that out to Asia, Africa, Europe, everywhere. Um, and we'd love for you guys to help us with that. Woo! Uh, thank you. Woo! More fish and more miscount. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>